What is up everybody? Welcome to a bit of a video that has been on hold for as long as the PC build video. Now when you see this multimeter, you're probably like, oh boy, he's reviewing another multimeter again. And that, yeah, you wouldn't, because in this here bag, we have another meter that is very similar in design and basically everything to this one. So yeah, today we have the Aneng SC18, a relatively new meter because a lot of the Amazon listings that I found have said that it first started started being sold in November of last year, so it's very new actually. And it seems to have a similar architecture to this to this one, except it's actually got a few cool features that I've I kind of wanted in this and it may actually be my dream version hyper evolved variant of this exact meter so let's do a bit of an unboxing and see what it's all about so let's take a look inside of this and it, oddly enough it came in a bit of a ziploc bag and there you go it just came with and then just came with this bag which is actually kind of typical for other meters that they sell um I believe it's like the Q1, which is the lower end version of this, um, is also sold with this. I think I've even seen the 8008 sold in this in this bag, kind of. So it's very common of them to do it. You get the typical set of probes and leads that they normally give you, which is a really good thing with, that I really like about these meters and why I like like these things. You get the typical probes. They aren't they don't last that long. Um, my meter actually took a while to, it actually, after a while they started having continuity issues. You got a thermocouple because this one actually has temperature readings and a user manual, which is a partially thick book. I flipped through it a bit before this video was being produced. Um, but yeah, this is the meter itself and yeah, let's get it out of the bubble wrap packaging and stuff. Alright, starting off with some of the first impressions. It's a bit bigger than the 8008. It's like, it's gonna be about, I'd say around one and a half times the size. Screen's a bit larger. Um, it's huge, actually. You get four buttons instead of two. Um, but yeah. Um, this is also sold under the, the branding of Q10 as a Q10 and not just the SC18, but that is mainly the difference between the Q10 and the SC18 is mainly the fact that it has a colorful selector switch. Um, thing worthy of note about this meter is that, like every Anang meter, it's actually, it is actually designed and manufactured by Zotec, and, this, and in this case it's called the ZTY. Now one thing they did do with this meter that they never did with the 8008 when they were doing the packaging for it is they never put a sticker over the current jacks because it's a very smart idea actually because the current jacks, you know, a lot of people make the dumb mistake of just shorting out stuff with the current jacks because, you know, inside the current is shorting out with the comm because that's how you have to measure current. It does it through a shunt. So yeah, it's a really nice feature they added there. So let's get that off. Unfortunately, the peel wasn't very satisfying as the pull tab where you're supposed to pull it was actually very sticky and it actually only really pulled off like a little sliver of it. But as you can see, you got split, split current jacks this time. It's kind of similar to the 8008 in that sense, but unlike the 8008 where it only has one current jack for amps and Microamps is measured through through the volts through the common volt jack. Um, this one has individual current and individualized current jacks. I, I kind of like that. All right, so let's just get our protective film off of our the top of our display here. I know everybody wants to see it. Do it slowly. That was a nice one. That was a nice tear off. Ho ho ho. 
Now speaking of our little colorful selector switch here, we have some very interesting selections. We have the off selection, it's not going to do anything. Um, volts, which has a lot of different functions um, on that. Um, millivolts, which also has the temperature thing because, yeah, because, you know, temperature needs to be measured in millivolts. You've got resistance, non-contact voltage, square wave out, much like the 8008, current in amps, current in milliamps, and then current in microamps. Meanwhile, the 8008 only has volts, millivolts, ohms, frequency, amps, and milliamps combined, microamps, and square wave. As it stands, the non-contact voltage is up here, and oddly enough, I don't know who this was designed for, but it has a... But, but apparently it has a flashlight. I don't know who needs it, apparently me, because I ended up buying this thing, but... Yeah, that'll be a cool thing to test out. Kickstand, though. Let's just get that in view. It's a bit bulkier. It's still like the 8008 where it's like... It's hard to kind of operate the meter while you're... While it's under that kickstand, but... It's a bit beefier this time than the 8008. That's a good thing, I guess. But anyway, let's do a bit of a look and, and see and... and s but anyway. Let's take a look inside of this thing and see what makes it up. Okay, the battery cover and the kickstand are their normal affair. However, it takes three AAAs unlike the 8008 that has two. That is very interesting. You still get the metal threaded insert on it. And it still comes out with four screws. And oh yeah, the orange part is actually real rubber. So that's actually a good step up in kind of build quality, I guess. Okay. I am actually really impressed with how they've evolved their their build quality. Um, right now they just use a like... I like how they did their battery connector, you know, it's not... The battery thing is not really soldered on, and it just... And it just has little things that protrude out of the PCB on the actual meter itself. Really nice. Um, you have your four input jacks. They aren't like... They, they don't seem to be like the immersion ones like you get on the really good meters. Um, you get actually bigger fuses this time. I'm not going to crack them open and see if they're sand filled or anything like that, because A, that would be a mess, and B, well, I want to actually use this thing. Another really interesting thing of note, the chip that it's powered off of, if I can get in on it, um, is not a silicon blob. Yeah, it's not an epoxy blob that chip. That's really good. Um, if my research is correct, much like the Q1, or actually as it's called in the Zotec world, ZTX, um, this is the main microcontroller, but on the ZTX, that was under an epoxy blob on there. Anyway, this is what controls the bar graph. There's your, there's your 5mm LED for the flashlight side of it. Up there is your NCV pad. You got a few things there. You got your one PTC. They still they still lack on the input protection though. That's a bit of a thing. Um, but you know what? Really nice actually. You know what? I am actually impressed. And I think we have our EE prom for the. Um, I should get out the for the. Um, calibration that's going into the chip and you get the, the little buzzer for the thing. So it's typical affair for them except for a few of those minor changes. I am actually really impressed with this thing already. Okay so getting into batteries was actually a similar affair. Um, so you know what? Not half bad. Um, I have literally got high hopes for this meter now. Um, you know what? So, let's get on to the actual review. Alright, so I've got the two meters plugged in and we have it all plugged into the power supply. And yeah, um, this, these two things, this is, this is just beautiful looking. Um, we've got, actually got a bar graph on the 
SC18, the 8008. Well, that's still equally cool. They seem to be about similar in accuracy. Um, the SC18 also has a bit of a has a backlight that the SC18 has the inverse display. That really looks cool. Really nice at night. It's like it's kind of like dark mode on these newer phones and computers. Really beautiful. All right, so let's now crank up the voltage on the power supply and test everything out. All right, there we go. We got the bar graph here. Okay, we're now at 3.4 volts, and that's about accurate on the bar graph. About 3.4, yeah. So not half bad. About the same accuracy. This one seems to be updating a small bit faster, um, but they seem to be at the same in the same boat. All right, now let's start cranking up the voltage into the into the tens. All right, we've got 10 volt. It's got the same counts as the other one. And we're at 32 volts, the max for our power supply. So yeah, really nice. It's doing its job and doing it really well, actually. All right, now I don't know what happened to the audio here, but I did administer a bit of a 120 volt test. Um, as you can see, they both did very good at it. Um, they were very accurate, and you know what? Turned out real nice. Right, so this meter has a bit of a, has a flash rail on it, which is a weird thing for me. Um, there's not too much that you could, that really is necessary of a flashlight when you really need one. But, it's, it's just a generic 5mm LED with a little diffuser on it. I've also got it on NCV mode, so let's just test that out. We got ourselves a light switch. And it detects that well. Um, let's test a few other things. All right, so I've got some power running through this little wire here. Um, let's just... Let's see. Oh, we got the... That's not the most sensitive, but there we go. Very sensitive there. It's really nice and sensitive. Um, let's see if it detects the socket. Uh, nope, don't detect the socket. That would be cool if it did though, but yeah, it's a bit of sense that it would. Anyway. Now, where these meters have really improved is in their resistance tests, um, as well as a few other things like diode and capacitance. There's a lot of differences on this one than there is on that, on the 8008, and there's been not very many changes in the capacitance test, but I thought I'd go over them for a bit of a go out. Now, first off, the auto ranging is a bit quicker. As you can see, this meter takes a while to get to the right range. But, this one, however, it takes about the almost the same time, but it's a little bit quicker than, than the 8008. Um, there's not too many notable things, um, outside of the fact that, well, I mean, yeah. Right now we have a 22k ohm resistor in this. All right, so it's actually not half bad with the resistance. Um, this is a 22k ohm resistor. Yeah, it's a few points off. But that's because it's not really easy to get it right on there when you're literally just holding the stuff. But anyway, um, as for the 8008, we have, and the 8008 says the exact same thing. Um, not half bad. Um, now if we do our diodes, we have the 8008, which if I invert that, as you can see, you can get the, we can get the thing to light up, and we get our voltage drop. Now, on the SC18, oddly enough, um, the diode is with, is usually, is with the continuity, which is a bit of a, 
common thing, which is not a very uncommon sight on these meters, but but it is a bit of a difference here. Um, as you can see, the continuity mode measures in volts rather than ohms. And there we go, he triggered continuity buzzer. And we get the exact same thing. <laughs> it is a bit of a... Yeah, it's not, not the worst thing, though. Alright, let's do our good old buzzer test. Now this is actually kind of nice. It's got a an LED on it. It tells you both visually and and not so visually. And surprisingly, the actual thing it actually is faster than I thought. Um, the bar graph may actually be analog. It's not like the they actually listen. It's literally improved this thing. These things are... Now it's not really latching. Actually, it technically is latched, but you know what? Really nice, actually. You know, it, it, despite it may not be latched, but the... but the, um... bar graph is actually quick to respond to that. That's really good. Um, you get the visual indicator up up top that's real nice and yeah it still it still however does not beat the 8008 which actually has good continuity buzzer um that's a bit of a that's probably the only problem i'm really having with this meter this may be a solid like nine or ten out right here not gonna lie and let's just do a bit of a small capacitance checker and we have ourselves a 100 microfarad cap and it still takes a while to range into to get into the range of it and there we go 92 something um, usually it is a bit of a weird point with these meters where they do where their capacitance test is like a little is a little way below spec or something like that because you know the capacitance testers these meters weren't really designed to be used as LCR meters um, so it doesn't really have the design it's not designed for these ca capacitors but it's still a cool function okay, let's just test it out and we get the same thing actually so really nice um it is practically the same thing so it, that may be a thing about it it's technically running similar variants of the same software on the inside but you know what overall pretty cool thing yeah all right so i forgot to really film this whole thing um as you can see the second display only really comes in handy when measuring um celsius or frequency because there is no hertz on this thing because they expect you to use stuff from the second display and that's that's really cool actually so yeah as you can see we can see what the 8008 is doing we have the 8008 outputting a square wave um, let's increase our frequency um, as you can see right at 100 and then 200 300 400 it's still at 15 1.5 frequency test here we can now do it with the two meters doing this stuff um, it's just it's practically the same thing as the 8008 so yeah but still very good and 5 kilohertz nice and both of them are displaying it real nicely so, yeah, so you know what, that's going to do it for today's review, um, yeah, like I said, really good meter, I'm going to give it a solid 9 out of 10, because the input protection could still use a bit of work, but otherwise, awesome job that they did on this thing. Anyway, that's going to be it for today's video, and bye. <laughs>